Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We have Lindy Schwarten on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Ohio, where the weather's not going to be as, you know, as bad as it is here. But she's on here to, yeah, share her health and fitness journey with us. And yeah, just talk things all health and fitness. And Lindy, thank you so much for coming on. Hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, absolutely. Well, I, I normally discuss the weather, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get depressed myself personally. So why don't we first off to get this started? Why don't you just give us your backstory on what really inspired and motivated you to adopt this lifestyle? And I mean, especially like going on Instagram and, and you know, just it helping inspire other people. Uh, Well, you know, the whole Instagram thing was um that's really like recent, like just a few months for me. Um, My journey as far as working out has been. I mean years um you're talking maybe like 15 years at least um you know i really um you know i was overweight in high school so you know eating right and it was always a battle to lose weight i guess and um you know i would would say after my first child was born was probably when i really started to get into really working out using weights um, things that go along with that, you know, trying to get the baby weight off, like doing all of those things. So, I mean, that's like the beginning of my journey was like, you know, 13, 14 years ago. So, and when you wording started, I mean, a lot of women, I mean, it's gotten better, but they still do have that fear that, you know, if they walk into the gym, they even look at one dumbbell, you know, they're going to put on 50 pounds of muscle overnight. And, you know, unfortunately that isn't the case because otherwise, you know, you'd be probably a trillionaire, but do you ever have that fear when you're getting started? And even if you didn't, I bet you still hear that all the time now. How do you like to respond to that? Um, okay. Yeah, I did. I did. I actually did. Um, I started off with five pound weights and I was doing videos at home and I remember thinking to myself, like my thighs were already big. I already had big thighs, so I did not want to do anything to add muscle to make them any bigger. Because I was like, they're already strong, they're already there. So like, any leg type of workout or you know weightlifting, I did not like really get into that. Like I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do some squats or some lunges or whatever they were asking me to do in in the video. Um, yeah, so that was my um, big fear in the beginning was my thighs. Um, but as I progress, I remember doing a certain workout video and I was like, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the program and lift the weights. And I did, I went, I went as heavy as I could at that moment in that time. And, uh, I dropped a jean size in one month, um, simply from the weights and I, I owe it all to, you know, lifting the weights the way they had asked me to do so in the video. So what videos did you use? Was it like P90X or uh, um, some of it was turbo jam. Okay. Um, some of it was the T25 by Sean T. Uh, you know, random other ones with, uh, Shailene Johnson. Um, they were all like super, super good. Um, for me. Um, especially being at home with, you know, little babies and stuff. Um, yeah, it took a lot to get out of that mindset of, you know, if you lift heavy, you know, you're going to get big muscles, you know, or you're going to look like a man or whatever. Um, you know, I, sometimes I still have to do that. Like I still have to fight that, that core mindset of that. Which my response has always been from day one. If if they look like men, then what kind of men are you hanging out with? And that's what I want to know. It's like, I want to meet these people and see and see what you're doing. So, yeah, but I mean, and especially this is so much more of a mental journey than it is a physical journey. Like people just see the results and they might say, you know, like, Lindy, you look amazing. They don't understand the mental transformation that has taken place as well. Because, I mean, for all that goes into the body, I mean, that mind, it's 10 times more important and it has so much more of an impact. Oh, yeah. Um, Do you mean like, uh, lifting the heavy weights or like just like the mentality that a lot of people get where like a lot of you become more self-confident you just become like mentally you just become a stronger person even more stronger than you do on the physical side 
well, it certainly does take discipline, like, um, mental, like, that effort on that. You know, for me, I definitely think, um, you know, that discipline, the mentality, you know, having to try to get your workout in, you know, at all costs, you know, you get addicted to that because, you know, you work out, you release like all these like feel good hormones and you're like, woohoo, I feel on top of the world, you know. And then like when you start to lack on that, you notice it. Like, I'm like, what the heck is wrong with me? You know, I don't, you know, I'm not right. Like my mind's not right. Um, so it's definitely clarifying for your mind. Um, you know, you just generally feel good across the board when you like get in your workout the way you should. And, um, so, you know, I, that helps support the discipline of doing it. Absolutely. And I mean, just the, the mental changes that, you know, exist too, I always just, I find so fascinating because there's so much more to this, this lifestyle than just the working out. And a lot of people just don't seem to realize that. But I also love to talk genetics too on this podcast because whenever someone first gets started working out, everyone always has that one body part that really, really takes off that they don't have to train as much. And then everyone has that one body part where like they literally just have to train it, you know, for 10 hours a day. every. Day. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, for me, I'm 6'3", so my legs are just absolutely shot. So I could, you know, I could train legs into oblivion and, you know, don't even get me started on calves. I've always made the joke. I could inject pure muscle into my legs and calves and they wouldn't even grow an ounce. But what was one body part that really, really took off for you? And that, what's been one body part that like still to this day, you just drag behind? Um, <laughs> okay. Clearly, I think if you check out my Instagram, it will do my biceps. You'd be like, oh, shit, you know? uh, sorry. No um, uh, I don't think there's ever a body part have biceps always been sort of like the thing for you or was that something that you just recently discovered that like, Oh, Hey, you know, that's something that really responds well for me. Uh, no, it's just, it's always been that like everybody, Oh, you look at your arms, look at your arms, look at your arms, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, as far as like a body part, it, it might be my butt, like my glutes. Um, something I, I try to grow or, you know, maybe round out or whatever. Um, I probably don't have the discipline in training those the way I want because I'm also, I don't know how to put this. It's like, I'm satisfied. So there's no major goals. There's no, I don't need, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm really, I love, I love my body. Like I love how it is now. I loved how it was, you know, 10 years ago. Um, you know, unfortunate. You, it's like one of those things where you have to like look in the mirror and you go, Ooh, I don't like the way I look. Um, but I think it's really important that in your journey, you love your body in every state that it's in. Okay. Because I mean, it does so much for you, um, regardless if you're working out or, you know, if it's not, a, you know, if working out isn't part of your life, you know, um, you know, your body still does really amazing things. You know, you breathe, you, you pump blood, you can birth a baby or you can do this and, you know, walk, move, talk, like, look at me, woo, you know? Um, I'm doing all of these wonderful things with my body as it is, no matter how it looks. So on top of that, you made a post one time that I saw it and I loved it about like how you do have difficult days. Everyone does. I mean, it's just those, they're going to be those days where you don't feel like working out or those days that you don't feel good about yourself. How do you deal with those days personally? Because that's what I think one thing really differentiates people that are really into this lifestyle and people that aren't is that the people that aren't, they'll just say like, oh yeah, you know what? I'll just take today off. And then that might lead into a week off. And then that might lead to just it just sort of helps them unravel. But the people that are really focused in this lifestyle, they just find that way to still, you know, push through it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I just, I had a recent one of those. Um, I, I think my theory is, is to keep it simple. Um, you know, if you plan on doing legs, you know, walk into wherever you're working out, it, whether it be the gym or, you know, in your own home, I work out a lot at home. Um, and I just, I aim for something simple, simple exercises, simple reps, you know, and sometimes you'll get into it and that'll bring that, that'll help bring you out of it. Like just starting, um, you know, and if I can't like bring myself completely out of it, I just continue doing simple things. Like, you know, I did squats and then I did lunges and then, you know, I did some hip thrusts and, you know, and I just gradually build and I did enough to feel like, okay, you know, I, I did it. I did something, you know, I'm not, my day is not a complete loss. I'm not going to feel 
bad about not working out um, because I, I did it. I did something simple. I mean, it, even if it was just going for a walk, you know, like if I get outside and I go for a walk and get the fresh air and I'm like, you know, you know, just feeling like you did something, you know, is really a key thing. Um, that always helps me. Like, that's the best thing that I can do. Um, you know, I used to have this theory, like, if you can just go in to the room and just do 10 push ups, just do 10, you know, and it's, it's kind of like, that's just how you have to get into it is I'm just going to do this, like one little thing. And then, and then you just add to those most people don't understand it's the little things that just add up yeah and once you get started a lot of times you know it becomes so hard to not get that workout in so that's what i always tell people it's like just just try to do something then and then and see where you know it goes from there but you mentioned before like yeah you're happy where your body's at and i love hearing that because i've talked to so many bodybuilders who are they could have you know an eight pack and they're like yeah i'm not happy with my body it's like okay i just i don't really know what to do with you but where do you what do you sort of have your mindset at now when it comes to like, do you have any goals like you were talking about, or is it just sort of like just maintaining the way that you look right now? Or where do you like to see yourself becoming, you know, in the future? Or is it just all about maintaining? Um, I think it's just about maintaining for me. Um, you know, uh, like they say like having a six pack is made in the kitchen. Um, so some of the things I struggle with is like nutrition. Um, so if my goals were anything, it would be nutrition based. You know, it's not like, oh, I want to see if I can lift the heaviest I can and, you know, do this or do that. No, like, you know, I'm I'm satisfied. Like, I've been doing it a long time. I got a nice, solid physique on me, I think. And, um, yeah, you know, I just, that's it. Like, mine would, mine would all be like, oh, can I eat this way for a week and have a six-pack for the beach and then... Um, okay, like enjoy vacation and not worry about it. You know what I mean? Like I want that as a really great relationship with food. What's the biggest thing with nutrition that you think you struggle with? Uh, snacking, overeating. Um, you know, there's nothing that I truly crave that I'm like, Oh, I have to have this, but it's just like, you know, I can walk in the kitchen, I open up the fridge and I'm like, Oh, what's in here? You know, Oh, this looks good. Or, you know, you're grabbing a little chips here and there, or, you know, a couple of Hershey kisses and all those little things add up. And then all of a sudden you're not feeling as good. And you're like, Oh, you know, what did I do? You're like, I only ate three Hershey kisses. Well, did you really like, you know, it's not. And then you check and half the bag's gone. You're like, Oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, before I knew it, I saw the, you know, the empty bag. And so that's us. Uh, those things I struggle with a little bit. So I really do have to focus um, when I am trying to, you know, lose a couple pounds. Like currently I'm in like this little challenge group and, uh, you know, I really have to focus on my meal timing. And if I get my meal timing down, I do a lot better with the not snacking because, you know, I'm, I'm eating every couple of hours. Um, but it's still, it's still kind of difficult in its own way so that's just like me with the super bowl this last year where it was like my mom made always makes cupcakes and, you know two of them turn into five and then five turn into ten then you're just like okay yeah i don't i don't feel so good the next couple of days but you know hey i guess you know yeah you go through that you know every once in a while but it's all about you know just getting back up and and getting back on that you know getting back on the train basically but just with you know all the stuff that you have in your life like being a mom and this lifestyle this lifestyle takes up a lot of time is the one thing that a lot of people complain about in the beginning but how do you sort of like to balance your day? Because it can be very stressful for a lot of people just finding that balance in their life when it comes to trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle and while doing all the other stuff that you have to do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 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 the last few months for me at my own like personal job has been, you know, actually pretty stressful. Um, so it is hard. And, you know, there was a short time where I wasn't getting to the, like my AM workouts the way I wanted to. And that was really starting to stress me out. Plus the work stress and like, you know, you really have to, you have to dedicate the time, you know, you have to go, I'm going to take an hour out of my day. That's going to be for me. I'm doing that. Um, or however long it takes you to work out. I don't mean to imply that you need to be there for an hour. Um, 
oh, I know some of those freaks that do like those that super intense stuff, and then they're for like fifteen minutes, and they they look like they're dead basically by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, no. <laughs> um. I think I just um. You know, I'm very blessed. You know, my kids are older. You know, they understand. They see me um working out. They understand if I'm like I have to get my workout in. Um. You know, balancing everything else. You know, I just. I try to work out in the more like late mornings, early afternoons, you know, it's, so my kids aren't, you know, here, um, you know, I'm with work, you know, I'm very blessed with my job right now, um, what, what I'm doing. So I'm really grateful for it, even though it's been stressful. Um, cause it gives me a, a good range of time for the day. So, um, and more or less, I choose family been working out over you know like a crispy clean house or you know making sure that all the laundry is done and put away like though working out in my family those are my mains like those are my important things like those are the choices like there's nothing that I have to go and clean the house like who wants to do that too bad I was raised basically with, you know, is that one in, is that one centimeter of dust that I see on the side of your bed? So, you know, unfortunately, I had I had that sort of upbringing. But do you prefer sort of the at home workouts? Would you like to go to a gym? Where do you prefer to get your workout in? Um, I like both. Um, I um, it, it, the gym I go to now is a kickboxing gym. And they're really wonderful. Um, so it has like a little bit of kickboxing and then it has like a resistance uh, portion, whether you're doing upper body resistance or you're doing lower body resistance. Um, I like going to the gym because it gives me somewhere to go and do like, I'm like, I'm going to the gym. I'm going to work out. And like, when I walk in that door, I'm doing that, you know? Um, I do like working out at home because I can go at a slower pace. I can focus on muscle groups that I want to focus on. Um, whether I want to do like a five day split for the week or for the month, or, you know, if I really just want to do a whole bunch of squats or, um, you know, I'm going to try, you know, uh, bicep curls with 40 pounds and see how many I can get just for giggles, like just to see what I can do. Um, you know, at the gym, you know, you're trying to focus along and go with that class, like in like what they're doing and, you know. So I, I both both have benefits, I guess. Um, yeah, that those would be my. Yeah. No. Ab- absolutely. Yeah, they both do, and I agree with that. Like once I leave the house and know that I'm going to the gym, it's like you become a lot more focused. Whereas when you're at home, you can kind of get distracted a little bit sometimes from from stuff. So yeah, I, I totally understand that. But like you said, you sort of like you you like you do splits or you'll do something else. Do you plan a lot of advance of what you're going to be doing like the next week? Or do you sort of just find out like what you're doing of maybe like a day or so ahead of time? Be like, Hey, this is what I should do. Or is it a lot more structured? How do you like to balance that? Uh, I, I'm probably just kind of jump into it a day or two ahead. Like, you know, if there's something I can follow, okay, like I'm going to work, I'm going to work chest and back on Monday and then I'm going to do legs on Tuesday and then, you know, take Wednesday off. And then I'll do back and biceps on Thursday. Um, yeah, like sometimes I just go in there and I just kind of guess like with what I kind of want to do. Like I usually have a focused idea of the groups that I want to do, you know, whether they be hamstrings or, you know, and then I just kind of pull through my memory and go, oh, you know, a hamstring, a hamstring curl would be good. Okay. A deadlifts would be good. Oh, you know, I could do some sumo squats. Oh, and I love curtsy lunges. I like if I'm working legs at home, I will always, always, always include curtsy lunges because I love the way they make me feel. So, so were you like the one person that was actually like set up for COVID by having like a full setup in your house? <laughs> I did not have a full setup. I still don't have a full setup. Um, I just have a bunch of dead, uh, dead weights, um, free weights, um, what else do I have? A couple of bands, a step, you know, but I don't have like a box. I don't have, actually, I, I did acquire a pull up bar and a treadmill just recently, but um, they're not up and running yet. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't have 
well, hey, you're making it, you're making it work. And that's, and that's great because a lot of people think that you need to have all that stuff to really get a good workout. And, you know, that's not, it's not the case. You just have to be willing to, you know, find different ways to do it. And it's a lot of it's is improvisation and just, you know, trial and errors, you know, really what I should be calling this podcast in the first place. I've wanted to change it to trial and error because that's this entire lifestyle. But how important is it for you too to sort of have that positive influence on your kids like seeing that like their mom works out and seeing that their mom's in shape and how important is it for you to portray that to them just so that they can you know know that like hey you could be in shape you know at any age and you can accomplish your goals as long as you try hard and work for them um it's it's funny because that was never uh an intention of mine like for my children but you know they're like woo, check this out mom look at my six-pack mom look at my muscles mom you know and it's really great. Like just over the weekend, you know, I was in there and I was doing like, um, kind of like this mini workout that I kind of remembered from the gym and, uh, which was like, um, oh my gosh, what is it called? Like a total body workout. So you did like squats with like the presses and stuff. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm like doing that workout and they're like, well, can I try? And I was like, well, here, you know, and so it was fun to like help them. Um, I helped them with their form. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, so you're pressing it up, you know, if they can't get up, I'm like, okay, the weight's too heavy. Let's take some off, you know? So it's kind of like, it was really great to have quality time with them, which I just really was like, man, that was just really great that we got to bond on that or whatever. And I'm huge on, on form. I like if, if anybody's listening and they are just starting their workout, I want to say that focus on your form because your form will get you everywhere you need to go. Sorry. I just wanted to put that in there. Oh my God. Thank you so much. It's for really that. important I, to me. I have seen too many gym bros just hurt themselves, just trying to go all out on something. And it's like, or those, I remember just in high school, some of those idiots that would automatically just put like 45s on the sides and they were like, weighed like 80 pounds. And it's like, why are you, I mean, it's just, yeah. So form over form over, you know, the total weight. Any time, and was that something that you learned through trial and error, or was that something that you just always had? Because some people, unfortunately, they've learned that the hard way. I think it's something I always had. Um, even then, with the videos, I was really like, really focused on doing it as properly as I could, and it was really helpful. Helpful if an instructor was like, "You should feel it, like you know, on the back of your arm. You should feel it right here," because if you weren't feeling it there, then you weren't doing it right. Um, so I think that was all, it was always important to me, like from the beginning, I think where, you know, I really tried hard to get it right. I've heard too many people about their stories about, yeah, torn tendon later. I finally figured out, you know, maybe I should take things slow and steady. So yeah, yeah, that is great. And I mean, like, let's be honest, you're not the average looking woman. I mean, if you were to walk out, I mean, luckily during the winter, you can, you know, cover up a little bit. So, you know, you're not going to be getting as many stairs, but like, especially during the summertime, I mean, it's like. I compare it to almost being like a mini celebrity where it's just like you are going to draw more people's attention just because it's something that they don't see normally. And has that gotten easier for you to adjust to that as you've, you know, been more and more into this lifestyle or is it still something that you're just like, wow, that's kind of interesting how I get a little bit more attention, you know, whenever I'm out and about a lot. Um, no, I don't notice it. Like either people don't notice me or I don't notice them noticing me. Um, you know, very occasionally I've been out with my friends at a restaurant and somebody be like, wow, do you work out? Nope, never set foot in the gym. Uh, no, uh, you know, so occasionally um, it's it's been like brought to my attention, but I guess I don't, it doesn't affect me really. Like, I'm just kind of like, yeah, you know, like, what, I mean, what what do you say? Um, yeah, it would just be like, thing. I always, I always did use that one as well. It's like, no, I've never touched a weight in my life. This all just came, you know, just naturally to me. I never really, you know, did anything for it. So, but yeah, I, I, I mean, when I was in a lot better shape in my younger, you know, my college years, you know, I got that a lot. So that was something that was a, was a huge adjustment for me, you know, myself, but you know, other than the form thing, what is one piece of advice that you would like to give people who are just thinking about getting started? Because I mean, so many mistakes are made by so many people in those first weeks that just drag everyone off from the gym, especially since we're, you know, like what, two months from the New Year's resolutioners. I mean, I can guarantee about 90 of them have stopped working out, but there's just so many things that people do wrong. But what advice do you have for people that are just getting started to help them, you know, get through those first few weeks, which are the toughest for anyone? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. 
I would have to say, okay, let me think about this for a second because I would really think, you know, commit enough to know that you deserve it. What, whatever inspired you to think originally that you wanted to start working out, um, you know, really commit to that idea that you deserve that. And to repeat that self to you, to yourself as many times as possible, because you do deserve it. You deserve to feel better. You deserve to feel stronger. You deserve to feel good in your skin or whatever, whatever your whys are, you deserve that period. Um, I think that would be the one thing and maybe just, you know, commit for one week and then commit for another week. You know, it's like quitting a bad habit and starting a new habit. It's, it's, you know, just, just commit for these short periods of time. And when you finish that short period of time, recommit, you know, um, I'd say take it slow too. I mean, so many people become full on Rambos when they walk into the gym for the first week and they're like, yeah, I worked out for like three hours. And it's like, well, Good luck waking up tomorrow. And the next thing you know, like, yeah, about a weekend, they're like, oh, my body just completely shot. And I was like, yeah, because you overtrained and you overdid everything. It's, you know, the slower you start off, usually the better it's going to turn out because so many people do think that, like, they need to go and train just as much as someone who's been training, you know, consistently for like 10 years has. And then, yeah, you're not going to be able to keep up with it. But you mentioned that you got a treadmill. Have you always been sort of a cardio person or is that one of those things that you're just trying to do now? Or where are you at with that? Because I personally hate cardio myself. Okay. Um, I like, I like walking. Uh, that's, what's fun about the kickboxing part in the gym is because like, it does give you like that, um, raised heart rate, you know, you're punching a bag, you're kicking, um, that kind of stuff. Cardio is actually kind of fun. Um, the treadmill I'm, you know, I, I had acquired, um, you know, it was, it was free. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to take this treadmill, especially in the wintertime when I can't go out and walk. Um, no, no, cardio is not, not my, my thing. Thank um, God. you know, I do like, but I, like I said, I like walking. Um, the treadmill is just kind of like, okay, I have this treadmill now. Um, you know, if I can do stuff that's like, like, like kickboxing. Yeah. Great. Um, and I think it should be short lived, if anything, you know, um, any cardio that you want to do. I mean, and it's different for everybody. People enjoy different things. You know, I know people that want to go run, you know, 20 miles. It's, it's a mental cool. illness, everyone. They need to, they need help. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no. And I, if I can just, like I said, I think up and moving period is great. So if, if that's what you're going to do, like do something. Um, Since we talk cardio, I got to talk about sleep. Cause that's one thing that's rarely discussed in the health and fitness lifestyles that, you know, like sleep is the most important thing. If not, you know, the most important thing just in your life in general, because anyone that disagrees with me on that, I tell them go and pull an all nighter and then try to go to work out and, you know, tell me how that works out for you. But what is your relationship with sleep? Like, because unfortunately, as you get more and more into a healthy and fit lifestyle, sometimes your sleep schedule can suffer as a result. Okay. Um, my sleep suffers all the time, in my opinion. Um, you know, I get up early for work. Like I'm talking really early. Um, so I'm, I'm usually in bed by like nine, like, and I just, you know, I try to get between six and eight hours of sleep. Um, will I always get it? I don't know. Um, I stress out. I get a lot of stuff in my head. Um, so if I can't sleep, then I'm really screwed. Um, yeah, you know, I, it's the best thing. Yeah. Sleeping is hard. I feel best on like seven hours of sleep. Um, that's when I really feel good. If it's restful, um, if I'm tossing and turning all night, I'm not going to have a good morning. Like I'm just not like, I'm not going to have the best workout. You know, you do notice you know, being tired and then going and working out. Like today I was up very, very early and then my workout was at like nine. And, um, like I noticed a little bit of a, like a drag 
there. Like, I was like, oh, like, I can't, you know, I'm only pushing as much as you can do, um, which is fine because I was giving 100% of what I could. So, um, but yeah, it's, sleep's hard. <laughs> and not everybody has the perfect lifestyle to do that, you know, to have, oh, this is, I get seven hours. I wake up and I got three hours before I have to do anything. Like not everybody has that, that lifestyle, you know, my downtime is like right now. Um, other than that, it's like, Oh, I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm going here. I'm going, I'm, I'm going, going, going all the time. So yeah, that's pretty much. Do you prefer workouts before work or after work? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it depends on what I'm, I like both, to be honest with you. Um, it depends on like what I'm doing in my job for the day. But, um, right now I have a preference to, um, like a mid morning workout with, which is like directly after work. Um, but other than that, I do like getting it up and I like getting it out of the way too. So I, I do like that. And that way I'm like done for the day. I mean, I'm just, I'm one of those people where, yeah, like after my job, there's no way in hell I'm getting a workout in just because I'm just too dead tired. So it has to be either before or, you know, an extended lunch period. But yeah, you gotta, I gotta find a way like with that. Cause I mean, I, I can do it after, but it's just, I am just so dead that, yeah, like I am so completely off and so just, so just out there that it's, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. But I mean, just with all the benefits that you see in this, in this life from, you know, just getting healthy and getting in shape, what is probably the one thing about yourself that you found about yourself during this lifestyle that has surprised you the most? <laughs> uh, recently, how much it impacts my mental well Um, And that goes hand in hand with the nutrition too. Um, you know, it, it really does all fit together. And for me, it's almost like I need this daily. And when I say daily, I don't mean lifting heavy, but like you do not want to be, you know, in the gym or lifting heavy for three hours a day. But what I mean is the fresh air, a walk, uh, you know, that movement. I need that every day or I'm not going to feel my best, you know, even like in my head, like, you know, like you say you look out the window and you're like, Oh my gosh, it's depressing because you've seen all the snow, you know, that's kind of like how it is in my head. It could be beautiful out, but if I didn't get what I need, it's like dark clouds. And I'm just, you know, that's like one of my things where I'm like, Oh, I really, you know, and there'll be moments where I'm like, like you had said, um, you know, how do you get through those days when you don't want to go work out? I drive my butt to the gym and I walk in the door and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this right now. Like I have so much other stuff I could be getting done. And, you know, then I do it and then I'm like, yeah, like, you know, you really feel that like happiness or relaxation or whatever it does for you set in and you know you're like i feel so much better for doing that yeah. it's yeah it's that gratification that you get i mean obviously this is a lifestyle that you don't want to get into if you're expecting results overnight you know i got to stress that out to people because so many people in my generation they want everything now and they want it yesterday and it's like you know this is not the lifestyle for you then it's definitely a lot of delayed gratification there and yeah, I mean, these changes aren't going to happen overnight, unfortunately, and I, I don't know how many times I have to try to tell that to people before it finally, you know, sticks in there with them, but on top of just, you know, all the stuff that we've talked about before, I mean, there there's a lot of misconceptions that people have about, you know, like, especially women that work out a lot. Do you, do you hear any of those misconceptions a lot, or do you sort of just like to block them out from yourself? Misconceptions? Well, like you said, like, like oh, they might look like men or something like that, or it's like, oh, yeah, you shouldn't be lifting heavy. Like, do you get any of that a lot, or is it just one of those things where you've just learned to just block that crap out? Yeah, I don't, I am not, I don't have any of that in my life. Good. At all. Like, and I don't know if it's because, like, I mean, just the people I'm surrounded by, like, they just are like, oh, this is Lindy, look at her muscles, like, that's who she is. And that's, this is my thing. 
this is it, man. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, this is who I am. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have that. I would say I had one experience with my ex-husband. Um, it was yeah, probably being in the beginning of my, um, journey. You know, I, I had said something about competing and he was like, well, I don't, I don't think I like women looking like that or something like whatever. And I kind of like put that out of my head, like where I was like, oh, I don't want to um, compete. I still don't want to compete. Like genuinely, that's not something I want to do. Um, but I just remember thinking like, can't you just be like happy that I'm like me? Like, you know, I have these muscles that are nice. Like, can't you be happy for me for that? You know? And that was the start of the end. So for a better word. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. And what was the inspiration be- behind your uh, Instagram page? You just think like, Hey, I, I think I could really inspire some people and let's just give it a shot. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell. Um, I think a lot of people really want, um, I get a lot of comments on my arms. I just wanted to see what I could do for people. Um, you know, hopefully I'm inspiring other people to work hard. And like you said, to understand that this is not, it's a journey. You know, if you are on this path, great, stick with it. Who knows where you're going to go with it? You know, um, you have to put the effort in. Um, I did not get to where I did not, I don't look this way from no effort. Um, yeah, that's just, I mean, that, that was pretty much it. I was like, well, let's see how this goes. You know, a friend encouraged me to do so. So, um, I was like, all right, like, we'll just see what happens. Um, well, and I say this for the end here, and I mean, like, let's be honest, your arms, yeah, you, they are your best part. I mean, they're amazing. What do you do for arms to get them to look like that? Like, what does an arm day look like for you? Because I would get so many crap, so much crap in the comments. I'd be like, why didn't you ask her about what she does for arms? Because I'm, I'm over here trying to get good looking arms. Okay. Um, well, as because I'm like in a maintenance kind of space, um, I really don't train my biceps that much um, or like super heavy. Now, occasionally I will do like, I'm like, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll see what I can curl just for giggles, you know, at home, you know, I might do one set of, um, say like 35, 35 pound dumbbells, you know, and I'll get them up like five times. Yep. That was good. You know, and then I move into a different type of workout. Um, I like superset workouts a lot. So, you know, I'll do bicep curls and then like hammer curls or, um, not stationary. What are those ones? Uh, shoot. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But uh, where you're static, it's not static. Hammer it's curls. Like, no, it's where you've got it like in your thigh. Oh, know? yep. 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 Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll think just, of it. Yeah. I'll do just do any type of bicep type move, you know? Um, yeah, I don't really, and like I said, I don't, I don't train the biceps like that heavy all the time um but i have before i mean in years ago i probably spent like two or three months just lifting heavy eating you know the protein um probably at that time in that time frame i was probably eating in a surplus like not really realizing my nutrition part of it um and just being like want to put on muscle it wasn't even, it was not even, I want to put on muscle. Like it was never like that. It was never like, I want big biceps or I want a big back or I, it was never like that ever. You want to know the reason the start of my entire journey was muscle burns fat. If you put on muscle, you will have a better shape figure, etc., and you can eat more because your body will be able to burn more. Like that's it. I want to be able to eat whatever I want and not have to worry about it. Like yeah, that I mean that's it. I'm not going to lie, that's almost the exact reason why I started to as well cuz I was like, "Oh, wait, you you're telling me I can eat more than and I won't have to worry about it." So I was like, 
yeah, I'll work out for an hour a day. And if I can have a burger, you know, every once in a while, and you know, a shake every once in a while. So yeah, I totally agree with you. And if, if only more people were given that knowledge before they started working out that like the, about the benefits that it would be, I think more people would stick with it and more people would try it. If they just realized like, Hey, I can eat even more than I'm basically eating now, but I can just, you know, there are just ways around it. So there's just so many things that people just, I think if they just were informed about, it would really help them in this, in this lifestyle, you know, unfortunately, but if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Lindy, we made a decision. You could change one thing about the, you know, health and fitness lifestyle in general, and you would, go, and everyone would go along with it. Will be one thing that you'd like to see changed. Um, probably women. Um, like I would say, women picking up heavy weights to not be afraid to put the muscle on. You know, and and to really, I would really like everybody to understand the the time frame that goes into having a nice big build, like or not a big build, but to have that density, that muscle. Like, you know, I didn't acquire this in two years. I acquired this over ten years. You know, little by little, step by step. Um, so when you have goals, which are great, whatever they are, you know, just you have to keep striving for those goals. And those goals might change along the way. You may never get to that goal because it might go by the wayside when you look at something else and you go, oh, I want that. You know, I used to be wanted like really skinny. I want to be like sticky, like, and no, I don't, I don't want that. And then you know, I just want to be like skinny. And like, now I'm looking at myself and I'm going, you know, I really do love the way I look. And then at, you know, at some point I was, uh, thinking I really want to be at a low body fat. And then I got down to a low body fat and I was like, Oh, Oh no. Like, no, I don't, I don't want that either. I want somewhere in this average athletic look. Like that's how I want to look. I look more or less the way I, I want to look, which is really satisfying when you think about it. That's the most satisfying answer I've heard because, yeah, like I said, I've talked to too many bodybuilders where it's like that's a sport where, unfortunately, when you get into it, you, you're never satisfied with yourself. It's always I need to improve. I need to improve. So to talk to someone finally that's just at that point where there's like I'm satisfied where I'm at. I like it. It's so refreshing for me to hear because it's like it's hard to promote that lifestyle when a lot of people when everyone just says like, yeah, I just can't. I just can't accept the way that I look right now. Like I need to keep looking better. So yeah, it's, it, that makes it so much easier for me, but I mean, this is a lifestyle too, that's ever evolving. Like you talked about. I mean, if you were to look at some of the workouts that people were doing, you know, 10 years ago, as opposed to now, like this is a, this is a lifestyle that evolves constantly. And what are the biggest changes that you've seen in the health and fitness industry? And over these last 10 years that you've been a part of it. Um, I, 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 again, I would say like how muscle came into the picture. Um, cause I think a lot of those, you know, 10 years ago and before it was all about cardio and, you know, Oh, look at me. I got one pound weights doing like, you know, a aerobic dance, you know? Um, I think in the industry, it's been like, uh, where they're saying, no, you know, you have to pick up heavy weights to do this. Um, you know, I think that's something that's been really taking off where people are like, more about um putting on the muscle which is great like even women in general I think have seen that where they're like yeah you know I, I want good arms I want I want to be strong you know and that's an important thing too like I no matter how I look I'm strong I can pick stuff up you know I can still pick up my kids and they're teenagers you know and I'm, they probably I, don't want you to, but you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't want me to. Mom, put me down, damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're fine. But, I, I, you know, I, I can still do that. And I like that. Or, you know, I can help somebody else that needs help. Um, and, you know, that's what I really like to do is, you know, if I can help somebody, I want to be able to help them. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's so many benefits to this lifestyle other than just, you know, the phys other than just the physical and mental that we talked about. I mean, like, yeah, you're able to help more people. You're able to, you know, you're able to do a lot more and you tend to have a lot more energy too. You know, 
if when we do have you on a year from now, because I'd like to talk to you again, because you are a great guest, where would you like to be at? Just in you know, just your your health and fitness, and just in your overall life, what are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when we have you on a year from now? Um, I would like I would like to touch a lot of people. <laughs> that sounded terrible. Don't put that on there. Um, I would like to inspire more people. I guess I would like by to touching speak. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Oh my god. Um. I, I think I would really like to, um, I guess get Instagram famous. I don't, I don't know. Um, to where people go, no, I want to listen to what Lindy says because I want to, you know, um, because I want to be able to help. Like I said, I want to be able to help people. Um, just hopefully that, you know, I can reach out and really, I, yeah, I, I guess just where people are like, I don't, I don't know. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just to to be that influence for people because yeah, there's so many people that that they look to the bodybuilders or they look to the people that are, you know, competing. They don't look to the people that just do it just because they like the way that they look and they like that. And I think there needs to be more of that because let's be honest, not everyone's going to end up looking like a bodybuilder. They're going to end up looking more like you. So to have someone out there that they can say like, I want to look like her as opposed to, I want to look like the person with the 16 inch biceps on stage really basically. Yeah, I want to be a good influence. You're right. That's a good word. Um, I want to be a good influence. I also want people to know, like, I'm real. Um, this is real life. Like, I still have imperfections. I still have, you know, areas of fat on my body that I'm like, yeah, I like that. Um, I want people to be, that's what I want for people. I want people to love their themselves, not just who they are, but how they look. I don't want anybody ever looking in the mirror and going, Oh, I want to change that. Or, Ew, or look at this, or I look fat or blah, blah, blah. No, I want people to embrace who they are. And I, not that they can't go into this lifestyle. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you're unhealthy, that you should stay with that. I'm saying, you know, if you choose to be healthy, go, I'm going to start my journey and I'm going to be, I'm going to start loving myself by moving my body. I'm going to start loving myself by eating better. I'm going to start doing all of these things and, you know, I'm going to get better. Like the world needs more sunshine, fresh air, um, you know, working out and eating better. Like, you know, there's so much um, processed foods that you eat and I, I would be one of them oh, I, you know, 100% food. me too yeah but I, I'm like but I still try to make those good healthy choices because I want to feel better and I stay you know that's going to overall over time you know increase my lifespan yep. you know so that's that's what I want to do I want to be a good influence for people I want to see a lot of people go yeah Lindy kind of knows like what she is and that she's real and you know i'm just like you and me and they have kids and it's crazy and a dog and cats and all sorts of silly stuff absolutely and you know i i hope this helps you and i think i think you're on your way yeah obviously the first couple of months have been good and you know yeah that is just so great and is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up Oh, no, uh, no, I don't have anybody. To Perfect shout answer, out. everyone. I love that. I love that. But again, you know, Lindy, I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down below. Everyone go and give her a follow. You would get inspired to get off that couch and you'll know, stop eating all those Twinkies and maybe try working out. But again, Lindy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and talking with us. I mean, it was an absolute delight. And I honestly do wish you nothing but the best. But again, you guys, everyone go and give her a follow. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.